All right. So this is creating a podcast for your class. This is completely free. I made my very first podcast last night because I've played around with this for a while. And I'm like, I want to start a podcast. And last night as I was preparing for today, I was like, you know what? The best way to do it is just to go ahead and dive into it. So if you want to start creating your own podcast while you are listening to this PD session, feel free to do so. I would love to hear it if you make one. Um, I'm going to send out a copy of the agenda that I emailed everyone. And for those of you who want to know how I make a forced copy on this, usually whenever you have a document, you have a link up here at the top. And at the end, it says edit. And if you copy and you send that to people, then they can view it only or whatever permission you give them. But if you erase edit, and just change that with copy, then it's going to force a copy for everybody that gets that link. So you're more than welcome to take notes on that link that I just put in the chat box. That can be your very own copy of this little note section. Um, like I said, I do have a podcast example linked on there if you ever want to go in and listen to it. This program is called anchor it's completely free you can even make money from it if you want to find out how to do that i i won't be able to show you that today because i have not had any listeners so um i can't really share with you how to do that just yet but i can later on if you ever want to be famous i might charge some commission i'm just joking i wouldn't do that um <laughs> so yeah if you want to take a listen to the podcast sample that I made last night, you can go there and press play. I even have music in it. It's pretty snazzy. Um, you can make them be however long you want. And, yeah, super fun. So, um, did anybody have a chance to listen to my podcast last night that I shared out? And thank you, Crystal. <laughs> I didn't know what to call it. Kennedy, you are the sweetest. The topic's kind of lame, but I needed to have some type of content, and we've all been in Amazon mode, I know. All right. So if you ever want to go back and listen to it, you can. It will push your um, podcast episode out onto any type of platform. Like, when I say any, I don't know all of them, but it pushes it, pushes it out to Spotify, Um Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts and I think Pandora, all of the big ones, whatever Androids is that it sends their podcasts to, um, it sends those out and students can download those on their smartphones or to their computers and or Chromebooks and um, listen to them at a later time. So if students do not have internet at home, they can go out to McDonald's or they can just drive up the road to wherever they get internet service on their phone download that episode and be able to go home and listen to it but not only just for that you think about how you as a teacher are interacting with your students you're giving them information little bite sizes of lectures or mini lessons or whatever it is that you want to call it and then we we send that out and the students have the ability to listen to it if next school year starts and we have hybrid or we have students that are in TI or whatever it is that our district decides to do, then this is going to open up doors and make it equitable for every single student because they can download it. Hopefully they can get to a spot where they can download it. So I really love it. It took me about an hour to make my first podcast. That's because I kept deleting clips and <laughs> stuttering and Audrey kept yelling in the background. So there's that. All right. So I'm super pumped. So here's how to get started. The first thing you want to do is go to anchor.fm. I'm just going to click that link there. And actually, I'm going to sign out. Okay. So when you click it, it takes you to their website. And you can press log in if you have a login. But we don't. So we're going to click sign up. So it's going to ask you all of this awesome information here like you would think it would. 
This one I'm going to make on my full account. I'm not a robot. Oh, I hate these. I always feel like I'm Buddy the Elf whenever they give me crosswalks, like jumping through there. All right. Hey, Stella. Uh-huh. Do we need to do this as you're showing us, or can we just watch? You can just watch me if you want, or if you want to open up a window, you're more than welcome to, and you can get started on your own. But we are recording this session, so if you had rather watch the screen and not work, I totally get it, and I will send out a copy of this video to you all later on today or maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that question. So that's it. It asks you like three questions, your name, your email, and then a password. And then it's going to ask you to just go ahead and make your first video. I mean, sorry, your first podcast. And I was like, oh, you don't have to publish it. So even if you're just playing around with it, just go ahead and click up. Let's do it. When you're ready to make your very own podcast, it's going to take you to this page. And on this page, you have four different, um, not icons, buttons, um, spots to click that you can pick from. The record is exactly like what you would think. That's where you're recording your little bite sizes, clips of um, audio. And you do not have to record everything at one time. You can record, like some of my clips were probably eight seconds long. And then you just drag them over once you get finished. Um, and I'm going to come back to that one in just a second because that's the heavy hitter for this session. On messages, you can click share voice message link and you can send that out inside of your Google Classroom or your Google site if you have one of those or however you're getting links to your students. And you can copy that link and then families or students or whoever can leave voicemails for you. Now that's pretty awesome for a couple of reasons. The obvious reason is, hey, you have a question for your teacher? Call this number, Just click on, or sorry, click on this link, leave them a voice message. It's also awesome for saying, hey students, would you like to be a part of the podcast? please answer this question or whatever prompt that you want to give them. And they would just go to that link. I'm going to paste mine up here. And they're going, oh, sorry, you had to set it up first. But they'll be able to share out their questions about um, whatever it is that you're asking. Now, my link's not working because I don't have my podcast actually made whenever I create my first podcast. My link will work. I went through that last night too. All right. So I love the ability to have those voice messages. I just, I geeked out whenever I saw that. Audrey thought that I was losing my mind, which she already knows that I have. It's her fault. <laughs> and Audrey's my daughter, for those of you who don't know. Um, underneath that, you have your library. If you have clips already recorded from previous sessions, then you're going to see those there. Let me go to my other account. Because what's really awesome is that every um, clip that I've had before, you'll be able to see. Library. So you can see those are from my uh, my podcast that I made last night. I could reuse those. So if I wanted my closing to be the same every time, I would have the ability to reuse that. And then lastly, you have transitions. That's in between each of your clips. It's going to play whatever it is that you pick. There's some cute little tunes in here. I mean, some of those are really cool. I spent too long playing with those too. So messages, library, and transitions are pretty user um, friendly. They're just wh exactly what you think. Leave a message, library of your clips, and then transition sounds in between your clips. Now, all right, I have a question in the chat box and Kennedy says, so they can only access it on anchor.fm or they can look it up on podcast app on their phone. 
It is absolutely not a silly question, Kennedy. They can look it up on their phone. So make sure that you give your podcast a very, um, not not a common title. Like you don't want to say, hi, I'm Kennedy. That There's probably a lot of podcasts like that. You might want to say Hearn, um, third grade, Frankfort, Kentucky. Make your title be a little long and then that way they can find it. You can also go to Apple Podcasts website and find the link for your podcast and share it out that way. Awesome. Thank you. That was a great question. Okay. So the first time that you click record on whatever device it is that you're using, it's going to pop up to make sure that you're giving it access to talk, to use your microphone to record your voice. Click allow. If you accidentally click block, then click the little padlock, go down to where it says microphone and make sure that it says allow beside of that. That's also really handy for any website that the students are using their camera or their microphone on. They can always go in to make sure that they have those options selected. So I clicked record. I gave it access to use my microphone. If I have an external microphone, like today I do, I can click on my drop down menu and use that. The podcast that I made last night, I did not have an external microphone and I created it on a Chromebook because I know that most of our teachers are going to be using that. So that's totally up to you. And then to get started, you're just going to click this start recording now. Hi, welcome to our show. Click stop recording and it's going to process. It takes it a couple of seconds to process. And while it's processing, I click trying to click this pencil so I could give this um, clip a title. And then after it got done processing, it erased the title every time. And I was so mad. Okay. So now it's uploaded. It's not processing anymore. I can click the pencil and I can edit the title of that clip. Uh, if I could spell. That is handy because now inside of my library, I'm going to have a clip that says welcome message. And if I always want my welcome message to be the same, I can just drag it over. If I want to re-record every time, I can totally do that too. So I'm going to drag that over. And that's going to be the first clip of my podcast episode. Yes, Carrie, you sure can. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But really, actually, I can go ahead and show you. So Carrie's question is, can you record on external devices and then import it? You absolutely can. If you record on your phone or if you record on like a um, handheld voice recorder or whatever, you can download that to your computer and you can click here. And you can just find that sound bite and upload it directly from there. I don't have any saved to my computer that are sound bites, but does that make sense? So Stella, uh huh, could a teacher potentially record their class lecture and then upload it as a podcast for students who didn't come to school that day? Absolutely. And the thing, the only thing is whenever you click record, notice that down here at the bottom, well, okay, down here at the bottom, it says heads up, you can record for 30 minutes in your web, your, your web browser. Um, but you can upload longer than 30 minutes if you're using a phone to record your voice or an external something, or if you're using Screencastify. On Screencastify, you have the ability to download only the sound. So I can show you all how to do that sometime if you want, if that's something you're interested in. And you could have, let's say that it's your block class, and let's say that it's a two-hour class. You could have a two-hour podcast if you wanted to. All right. Um. Does anybody have any questions about like 
recording your sound or uploading directly from your device. I will also say that Anchor has a free podcast um, app and you as a creator can create podcasts directly on your phone with that. So you wouldn't even have to download your sound bites from your phone onto your computer and upload them that way. You could actually just upload them from your voice um, app on your phone. And I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think actually I know that Apple has a voice memo. So they automatically have a uh, voice recorder on the phone if you need to use All right, I'm going to move right along, but if you have questions, please drop those in that chat window and we will get them answered. Um, when you create your video, say that you want to make it a little bit fun. You want to add some background music to it. You can click this little icon here, which is the world symbol for music, right? And um, they have pre selected songs for you and all of these are copyright free so you click the little play button that sounds kind of bluegrass and uh country i'll just pick that one there <laughs> so you click it when it's got the green check or sorry the purple check mark you can make the music be loud you can make it be kind of quiet if you want to and then when you press apply it's going to make a copy of that sound bite because now it's a different sound and it's going to add that music directly to the background and you can just drag it over and if you no longer want like it would be kind of redundant to have both of those so you can always just drag that out oh sorry can't drag it click the three dots and you can remove from that episode that so deletes that out All right, so you can go in, you can make as many sound recordings as you want to. You can only record a 30 minute clip, doesn't mean that you can't go in there and record like five 15 minute clips. You can, absolutely. So you record every clip that you want. This is my second clip. And then you can just drag those clips over into whichever process or whichever order that you want to. I did click this last night and um, the, it told me that I needed to get more listeners <laughs> before I can get money. <laughs> so not right now. <laughs> um, do you all have any questions about the record feature or how to add your own clip? So now I'm going to go down to transitions and I'm just going to pick one. I'm just going to click this one and I can put those transitions in between whichever clips it is that I want. And now that I have everything finished the way that I want it to be, I can click this preview episode button and it's going to give me the option to listen to my entire podcast before I go in and begin um, publishing that out for my listeners. So if while listening, you're like, oop, I don't like that. That's the beauty of having just small clips recorded instead of like a one 10 minute clip, because then you'd have to go and redo that whole thing. Um, you can, but I say that, but you could also click these three dots and you can split those into multiple seconds. So like, let's say that I want my first five seconds to be one of my clips. I can click that and click that split here button and save and split. And it will split those, um, part, split that swing clip into multiple parts. That way, if I do go back and I'm like, yeah, there was a student in my class that said something completely inappropriate and I want to make sure that I'm clipping that out, you can go into that clip, find the time when something inappropriate was said or something that you don't like was said, 
and you can click those three dots and split that into multiple segments and kind of crop that out. Also on the three dots, you have the ability to download that whole audio file and you can save that to your device if you would like to. So how are we doing? I feel like I'm going really fast because I'm really excited about this topic. <laughs> Looking at the time, I'm like, oh, we're doing good. Awesome. Sweet. Okay. So once you get it finished, it's all ready to be pushed out to your listeners. You just click this purple save episode video or button, not video. <laughs> and it's going to ask you a few questions. Um. I do need to verify my email address with Anchor, but I'll do that in a second. So I'm just going to call this one 76 PD um, over podcast. <laughs> you can give it a description, which would be perfect if you are giving students a copy of your lecture. So let's say that you have a Google Classroom assignment that you want to give or link. You could go to your classroom. I get one of them pulled up. And I know some of you all were in our last session, so this might sound a little bit redundant, and if so, I'm so sorry. But for those of you that were not, you can go to your Google Classroom. Don't judge my classroom. I'm doing lots of PDs. <laughs> um, go to the class and click Classwork. And let's say that you have a topic, and let's say instead of start here, this says week one. I can click right here and copy a link for a whole topic, or I can click the side of a single assignment and copy that link and take that in to my podcast episode description. Make sure to read your notes here. And it's just really giving the students another opportunity to see, oh, I have a Google Classroom assignment because although you've posted in Google Classroom, we know sometimes the students don't really see those um, as quickly as what we want, but it's all going to be right there. Underneath that, and you can add up to 4,000 characters, so you can type until your heart is content. <laughs> Underneath that episode description, though, you have the published date. So let's say that you recorded it um, at like three o'clock in the morning or you recorded it and you don't want it to publish until next week. Then you can do that and you can pick the time. Click confirm. Underneath that, you can go a little bit further with your customization if you want to. So if you want to call your school year seasons, and you, you think that podcasts are something that you can use for years and years to come, you can call that season one if you want to and give it an episode number. I always like to use those three digits. I don't know why. It just looks good whenever I see them on podcasts. Um, and then you can select your episode type. So you might have a trailer like, hey, you won't believe what we're covering in class tomorrow. Kind of like a movie trailer. Um, you can make it be a full length episode or you can do a bonus episode if you want to. And if you listen to podcasts, those are going to make a little bit more sense to you. If you've never listened to podcasts before, I would just make everything be full, really. I mean, those really aren't going to matter. And then, since we're educators, <laughs> we don't need that last option, but it's there in case you ever do need it. Um, if you have explicit content, make sure that you put that little E beside of your title. Kennedy, I'll show you how I created that. I actually use Canva, but um, I'll show you. All right. So now at the end, I can either save this as a draft because if I don't save it, all of my recordings are going to be gone. So make sure that you save those. Um, not really gone. They're still in your library, but the little drag and drop area will be gone. So make sure you either save it as a draft to where you can come back and work on it at a later time, 
or you go ahead and schedule this episode or I'm going to go ahead and say post it for now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click publish now. Oh, darn it. Let me verify my email address like right quick. It's trying to make me activate my account. Got it. All right. So now I'm going to have the ability to see my um, episode. So if I click on episodes up here, right here is where I'm going to have all of my podcasts located. And I can click on any of these and I'll be able to see my episode analytics. So I'm going to pull back over my episode that I've already published here. You can see that I have five plays. I have five audience members. Um, and I can see my top episodes. It breaks down where my listeners are, which hopefully all of ours are in Kentucky. But who knows? You know, you might be really popular. And then you can eat like... You can break it down by listening platforms, age, and gender um, when you've got more than five plays. Because I think two of those are for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, to get to your episodes again, you just click episodes. And it will have a list of your episode names right there. If you ever publish an episode and you're like, mm, I don't really want that to be published anymore, you can click on episodes and click these three dots. And you can either delete the episode or students, you can share that link with them. So if they get that link and they want to listen to it on Anchor's website, it'll look like this. <laughs> And they can listen to it directly onto their device. Crystal, I don't think so. Because um, it asks whenever you create your podcast, your language, like whenever you publish it out to all of your um, platforms, your Apple Podcasts or whatever, and ask you the actual... Um, language that you speak. But thinking about that, you could have the students like use Google Translate on one device, play the episode, and then they can translate the words that it picks up. But it wouldn't be perfect. Um, it, oh, you're very welcome. Does anybody have any other questions so far? Are we still good? Okay. Um, if you, they can click on the episode whenever they're there and they should be able to see all of the user notes. This episode, I did not include any um description or anything so i don't really have anything to go there but if i did because i just put this little line but if i did all of my user notes would be here if i had any links they would be right there too in order to share crystal i so if you wanted to collaborate with another educator and they were not sitting directly beside of you. Anchor would be a little bit more challenging than some of the other platforms that you would have to pay with. However, you could do a Google Meet and then um, take turns talking that way. And one of you presses the record button while the other's talking, if that makes sense. And you were you could record the sound coming out from your speakers into your microphone. But you would probably need an external microphone to be able to make that work. Absolutely, Jamie. If you want to share this with your students, whenever you click episode and you click those three dots, 
you can copy that public link to and paste that anywhere. It could be in your Google Classroom or wherever it is that you want, or you can send it out to remind for parents. Really, you could send it anywhere that you can share a link. Awesome, awesome. All right. Um, I wanna take a look at my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything before I share with you all a few more things. Um, one thing that I thought, a question that I thought would come up, so I copied and pasted it down here. You cannot create your own podcast if you are under the age of 13 years old. That's just part of their terms of use. That does not mean that under 13 cannot listen to the podcast. It just means that they cannot create it. If you have students that are 13 years or older, but under the age of 18 in the United States, then you will need a parent or guardian consent to use Anchor. Um, so you can, high school teachers, you can use Anchor to have your students create podcasts if you want to, but you would need that parent parental consent. I just thought that question would come up. <laughs> so I, had, I was prepared. <laughs> um, we did all of that, talked about that. So the only thing here that I've not shared with you so far is this last two, connect your social media. So I'm going to come back over. On your dashboard, you can actually, like if you have an, a Twitter account or I think Instagram. Oh, no, sorry. If you have a Twitter or a Facebook account that you use just for your class, you can connect your Facebook posts or you can share out through Facebook if you want to do that. So you can click right there and it will. The first time it will ask you to log in on Facebook. You can tweet it if you want to. You all know I love me some Twitter. And then there's another copy URL. And if you use Google Sites, if you were part of our morning um, session over Google Hub, or sorry, Classroom Hub with Google Sites, you can copy the embed code and embed your podcast directly on your website. And students won't have to go to Anchor. They won't have to go anywhere. They just go to your site and it will be already, already embedded on there. Okay. One of the last things before I talk about like how to make it pretty and all of that. Um, if you want to share this with your parents, like I said before, you can copy and share out however you get parents links. But let's say that you send home a weekly newsletter or you're sending home a get to know your teacher. If you want to copy that URL link, you can open up a new tab and search for a QR code generator. I always click the first one. I don't know if it's the best, but it always works. Um, and you can paste your link directly into this program and it will automatically generate a QR code for you. You can download that and then you can upload it wherever you want. Oh, sorry, this one makes you sign up. So I always just do a screenshot of that and copy it because <laughs> I don't want to log in. It's free to sign up, but I just, if I can get around it, I will. If you don't know how to do a screenshot on a Chromebook, it is this. Control, shift, and the button right above the six. Oh. And it will do this to your window, and you just highlight the part that you want to copy, and then you can save it copy and paste it wherever you want. If you want to log in, you always can too, though. <laughs> if you're a better person than me. <laughs> I'm just kind of lazy. All right. So, do you all have any questions about the actual logistics of making your podcast? Hey, 
Hey, Kristen, you absolutely can. And that first one that I talked about, um, it tries to make you log in and it's completely free. It might be the second one that does not make you log in. It's definitely the second one. When you do a Google search for QR code generator, click on that second one. Um, you can copy that URL. Close that of this one. Paste it. And then on this, and I'll share the link to this one in the chat window too. Uh, because the thing that I like about this QR generator, you can just right click and copy and paste that wherever you want it to go. Right click, copy. Let's say that you wanted it to go into a, what, a Google Doc. So I've got my pretend newsletter here. I can just paste it and it's probably gonna paste like three times because I'm impatient. But, um, and there you have it. And make sure that you are telling your parents if you are a QR person, like you're sharing your QR codes, tell them like, hey, I don't know if you know this or not, but your camera on your smartphone, whether it be a Droid or an Apple, if you pull that up, it's gonna automatically scan your QR codes for you. They don't have to have a separate app for that anymore. Okay. Now, this next part is just a little bit extra. And for those of you who might not be interested in it, like you're, if you don't want to know how to make a cute little header for your, um, your site, then you don't have to. But... In order to change your icon, you go to settings, you go to update settings, and that's where you can change the title of your podcast and give it a description. You can also update your cover art here. Now you can do a search for a photo or upload an image or they can choose one for you. I uploaded an image, I made that on um, Canva. And I'm going to show those of you who are interested how to do that in just a minute after I post the login inform or sorry the sign up sign in information after I get my tongue untwisted. Um, but yeah, you can change your podcast cover art. This is where it asks you to put put a podcast category. So I picked education, and Crystal, this is where you pick the podcast language. So that was in the settings part. Um, and then underneath that, you have some advanced options about your show the anchor, anchor logo on your cover art. If you do that, it's going to have this little, this icon here. I didn't pick that. Um, show voice message button on your profile. Include voice message links in your episode descriptions. I could probably leave that turned on. If you use a lot of adult language um, for a podcast that you might use, not for school related, don't do it on your at franklin.ky schools because, um, you know, <laughs> just for privacy issues for yourself. But if you ever do use explicit language, make sure that you click that. And then underneath there, you have your account settings where you can go in and add, a, add in all of your different um criteria that you want to oh that's not good <laughs> i don't want the district's twitter on my thing that would probably be bad okay so press save and then after you press save you've got it all linked together okay so all of this we talked about was under settings up here in the corner we went to update settings and that's where you can add all of those different features. Okay. Are we good so far? All right. Let me go back to my Google Meet. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post the... Um, the link for the sign in and the link for my anonymous feedback. That way I can use that to grow because I want to make sure that 
I listen to you all because I want the PDs to be something that our teachers find useful. I know that there's nothing worse than going to a PD session and you feel like it's not really geared towards you. I always strive to make these professional development opportunities be as user friendly and just as accessible as possible. So if you don't mind, please give me some feedback. So the first link that I post is a sign-in sheet. That one is how I get your pity hours. I know I posted the right one this time. Let me double check again though. Now I've got PTSD. I do have the correct form. All right. So that one is the one that you're going to get your PD credit on. The second link that I'm going to post here is your anonymous feedback. So if any time you feel like uh, you're finished, you're more than welcome to hop off. If you do choose to create a podcast and you get stuck, reach out to me. I got you. I got your back. If you do a podcast and you don't get stuck, I would still love to listen to it. Please share with me. I promise. I just like to listen to you all. It makes me feel so good when I see all of the things that we talk about being implemented. It makes me so happy. Um, and third, I'm going to share out a recording of this entire session with you through your email. So, when you fill out that sign-in sheet, make sure that you type your email address incorrectly so I don't get a kickback um, for an invalid email. And I'll make sure that you get that. Okay. Now, all my peoples who are interested in how I created this cute little icon here, since it's not really related to podcasts, I didn't want to waste anybody's time who may not sign that interesting but if you do it's really simple so canva if you've never used it before well if i could crop is kind of like um your own graphic design uh suite <laughs> it's got everything however sometimes if you don't have the premium account there's a lot of things that have a hidden fee which is kind of a bummer but here is the link. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, just to add in, since you mentioned the premium account and, and costing money, educators can get the premium account for free just by going to Canva and requesting it. All I did was go to, because they asked for verification, I simply went to EPSB, found my certification page, did a screenshot of it and sent it. And within two weeks, they had my premium account turned on. Awesome. Yes. And I was just fixing to share the link for that in our chat window. And I just did link for amazing Canva. If you click on that, it's going to give you access to the free Canva for educators. Um, it does take a little bit of time. Like Brenda was saying, I just took a picture of my badge and sent them that and it worked so any way that you can just show that you work for the school or if you just take a picture of the district website and it's got your name in there you can just do that however you want so that you can create a free canva account until you get approved for free canva everything and when you get in there just click sign in with google or sign up with google and click this create design. Once you get in there, I picked Instagram posts. That's what I picked for everything just because I know what that looks like in my head. I don't have to worry about like the size of it because I already know. And inside of here, it just kind of gives you a blank. There's templates and stuff if you want to pick from one of those. But I just like to use my blank canvas <laughs> here. Um, and I, you just... I start with the background usually. I used the white brick. I just really like that um, for mine. But let's say, like, it just looks so pretty. 
in my opinion. You might want like a wood background or whatever background you want. You just find it. And then you can add your text boxes. They already have some preset fonts here for you. Some of those will be the pro account. So you will get them for free. I always use Cheers just because I'll, it looks like a marker. And I don't know. I just like it. But you can pick whatever font you want. Tons and tons and tons of fonts. All of the ones with the crown on it are pro. So until you get your pro account, make sure that you're picking the freebies. And you can type whatever it is that you want. You can make it be as large as you want to. You can change your colors, make them be whatever color you want. Um, and then I added in some elements, which are just like little clip arts. Move them around. I always like to look up a border. And add me a nice little border on there. And then once you get it finished, because I could really spend hours playing on one design, you just click download and save that as a PNG or a JPEG. Either of those are, high, are image pictures. Um, and download it and then go into your settings of your anchor and upload that to be your picture of your um account your podcast <laughs> i love canva i i feel like we could have a whole um episode just on canva if we really wanted to <laughs> but yeah i also need to make sure like that i didn't tweet out my podcast last night on franklin county's twitter account oops <laughs> All right, so that pretty much brings us to the end of the session. I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes to kind of um, wrap up and answer any questions. So if you want to play around with Anchor while we're sitting here, feel free to hop back on and bounce a question off of me. But at 12, I'm going to go grab some lunch before my 1 o'clock session. <laughs> so if you need anything, let me know.